Democrats are raising the bar for the next presidential debate. If candidates want to appear on stage next month, they'll need to prove higher poll numbers and more donors than at any time during this election cycle. Only seven of the 15 candidates qualified to be at this week's face-off in Los Angeles. The seventh presidential debate is scheduled for January 14th in Des Moines, just weeks before the first voters in the country caucus in Iowa. While the candidates are looking to unite the party behind them, it may prove especially difficult due in part to some big divisions based on age. The problem is highlighted in an article in The Atlantic titled The Millennials versus Boomers Fight Divides the Democratic Party. And we're joined by its author, Atlantic staff writer Derek Thompson. Derek, good morning. Good morning. So many places to go here. But let's just start with the front runners in the Democratic Party. And you think of a Joe Biden and a Bernie Sanders. And Bernie has all this young support. What are we learning from just that alone? Yeah, the age gap in the Democratic Party might be the most important story in the Democratic primary race of 2020. You draw a line down the age of 40. And it's a really interesting story to tell because Americans under 40 seem to have absolutely no interest in the Democratic frontrunner of Joe Biden. And Americans over 40 seem to have very little interest in the favorite candidate of younger Americans, Bernie Sanders, who is arguably running in second place in this party. And I think it comes down to two things. I think it comes down to this generation being really hit in the face by the Great Recession. The Great Recession really took a toll on the millennial and Gen Z generation, and it has pushed them to the left. And then I think they've somewhat socialized on social media, talking to each other, commiserating, learning to talk about the problems of this country through a different language the language of democratic socialism, not traditional American capitalism. It's like a third party. Yeah, yeah. It's like we can make a difference versus let's beat the other guy. That is exactly what I think. That is exactly what I think. Because, you know, traditionally in the United States, historically, there have just been two parties, right? We're not like England. We're not like a lot of countries across Europe that have all these different parties competing in a parliamentary elect a a system. We just have two, the Democrats and the Republicans. But if you look at the preferences of younger Americans, you look at their preferences not only for Bernie Sanders, but also for policies like Medicare for all, for free college, for student debt forgiveness, extraordinarily popular policies among Americans under 40, but among Americans under over 40, they say, this is socialism, we don't want it. So age divides not just Democrats and Republicans, but it divides young Democrats from both Republicans and their own party. It's not, it's not just the candidates, it's the current leadership. As you point out in the article, Speaker Pelosi was born in 1940, Majority Leader McConnell in 1942, President Trump in 1946. Yes, we have the oldest Congress in American history. We have the oldest president in American history. And in fact, no matter what happens in 2020, we're going to be setting a record. Because you look at the top four candidates, it's Biden, it's Bernie, it's Warren, it's Pete Buttigieg. Either we will elect the oldest president-elect in American history, or we will elect the youngest with Pete Buttigieg. It's really a fascinating split you see within this party. Well, here's a quote from your article. The Medicare for all debate is a microcosm of a larger divide. Can you expand on that? Yeah, so Medicare for all, if you poll it, is really exquisitely sensitive to phrasing. So if you say, do you want Medicare for all? A lot of Americans will say, yep, that sounds pretty good. I like Medicare. I like for all. It sounds great. But if you ask them about details that exist within Bernie Sanders' plan, it starts to get a little bit complicated. If you say, do you support eliminating private insurance or taxing all Americans a little bit higher to pay for this plan, it becomes extremely unpopular. And that, again, I think just goes to show Americans over 40 like capitalism. If you ask them explicitly, do you like capitalism or socialism, they say by about a two-to-one margin, we prefer capitalism. If you ask Americans under 40, it's practically tied. And among the Democrats under 40, the edge goes to socialism. So I think it's very important to think about this younger group, not just as younger Democrats, but as a third party domiciled within the Democratic Party. Real quickly, though, Derek, before we go, this younger party, there are more numbers that are older when it comes to voting at this point. But is there any indication that these younger voters will come back to the party instead of what their just their beliefs are? Will they stay with the Democratic Party when it comes election time if it's not their candidate? On the one hand, a lot of evidence seems to suggest that people get more conservative as they get older, but people's views on politics tend to consolidate in their 20s. So we may be living with this for quite a while. Derek ends the piece with a great line. Not, not in a mean way, but at right. some point they have to grow up. Yeah. Yes. Wow. <laughs> That's age. what I mean. Yeah. Literally it age. Nailed Literally age, yes. Well, how about that, Derek Thompson? He nailed it. Thank you so much.